Shalom, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. This is the homily for the 19th Sunday in the Ordinary Time. The theme that I've chosen for the Sunday is The Art of Dying Well. It is in fact a great book written by St. Robert Bellarmine. We may not relish contemplating death, but doing so constitutes an essential element of a life well lived. Realizing that our life on earth will decide how we spend eternity. It may not be an exaggeration if we say men no longer know how to die in the modern world. Something you don't think about until you have to. Socrates described philosophy as a preparation for death. Saint Benedict directed in his rule chapter 4, Remember to keep death before your eyes daily. Epicurean philosophy, which many Americans' philosophy in the modern world, is in fact, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. The modern American ideal seems to be eat, drink, and be merry because it's fun. We have so much money, and medicine protects us from sickness and puts death so far away. It's easier than ever to put dying out of our minds. Link to the readings. You might be wondering, why am I talking about death? The focus of the book of wisdom, especially chapters 11 to 18, is the providence of God during the Israelites' exodus out of Egypt, with a theme of the salvation of the just and the destruction of the wicked. After an introduction, there are five examples of God's providence. Our first reading is within the fifth example and recalls the night of the first Passover in Egypt, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 to 36. The passage reflects on the event when if every Israelite household, obedient to the instructions God gave them through Moses, offered a sacrifice to him, Exodus chapter 12, verse 3 to 14. Every household sacrificed a erling lamb or a goat kid and smeared its blood from the threshold to the lintel and each doorpost in the sign of a cross. Their faith in God gave them the courage to perform the sacrifice and eat the sacred meal of the Passover victims within their homes as the angel of death passed over. And God spared the lives of their firstborn sons. The Israelites' obedience of faith led to their salvation. If the Israelite chose not to do what God asked them to do, they would have lost their firstborn to death. It's the obedience to God's commandments saved them. The two parables on being ready for the master's return in today's gospel reading, Luke chapter 12, verse 35 to 40, is a way of telling when you die, you will face the Son of God coming to you for judgment. But are you ready for the return of the master? That's an important question. It's a question about how we die. Is that an American Catholic way of death? Priests tell me that for Catholics today, the death of a loved one is something to get through without much help from the church. They'll want a memorial service and a burial, of course, but not a funeral mass. Nowadays, even burial is denied. But if Grandpa planned out his funeral mass in detail, they'll tell the priest that Grandpa wouldn't want them to have to deal with all that when they are mourning. So just forget it. It used to be that even Catholics who rarely went to mass at least had their children baptized and had a funeral mass for their parents and made sure they got last rites before they died. Now, the main people involved seem to be the doctors, the funeral directors, and whoever helps with the memorial party. The priest is another functionary and the least important one. I've seen this in some Catholics I know. The church is part of their culture, but not part of their lives. They give up all the help the church would give them and the hope. It's sad. What are the practical effects of a keener awareness of mortality, our own and others's. It depends on who you are and what you believe. To people who don't believe in God, death says, live for today. That can mean 
hard partying or enjoying being wicked or just being a decent person or investing yourself in the future through your kids or maybe through your work or your art. Probably for most, if they think about death, they think they should do good because it's good to do good. It's a kind of mediocrity. Death tells Christians to live for God and for others because someday you will be dead. You're training yourself to be someone who wants heaven or someone who doesn't. How should we look at death? First of all, death, literally speaking, is a passing from this world to the next. When our time comes in accord with the will of God, we should welcome it and anticipate our full immersion into the life of God. As Father Henry Newman remarked, dying is the most general human event, something we all have to do. The question he asks is, do we do it well? When you can acknowledge that you are going to die, you can begin to live your life. Euthanasia promises a happy death, but what is a happy death in reality? One in which you know that as St. Paul said, I have fought the good fight, I have kept the faith. One in which you rest in God's love for you and for everyone you are leaving behind, with no regrets as they say in romantic comedies. Basically, you want to die as a saint. If not a saint, someone who looks forward to being purged and refined through God's love in purgatory. But dying as a saint is better. St. Augustine wrote, Live in such a way that when you die, you don't die. Three sacraments are especially important for a person in danger of dying. Sacrament of Reconciliation, Eucharist and the Sacrament of Anointing. When a Catholic receives these sacraments before he or she dies, that is what we call a happy death. Only two things that every Catholic must do before dying. Number one, receive the three sacraments before you die. There is no compromise for this. Number two, instruct your family to have a funeral mass and burial. Cremation is only the last option, but you must be buried in a cemetery or a crematorium. Vatican instruction ad resurgendum cum Christo regarding the burial of the deceased and the conservation of the ashes in the case of cremation gives you a detailed description regarding the option of cremation and the mandatory burial. I will put the link for this document in the YouTube channel. Please go and click and read it if you get an opportunity. The Catholic Church even has a website called artofdyingwell.org to help people what to do in preparation of death. This is what we mean by a happy death, to die in the state of grace so that we can meet our Savior and meet our loved ones who are waiting for our coming. If we do not care for the coming of Christ, when we die, our passing has no meaning and life. Live in such a way that when you die, you don't die. St. Augustine. Amen.